Hey good looking, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kendra Morgan Official. If you're new here and you like single eyeshadows, you like makeup brushes that aren't Morphe, or you like sunscreen, subscribe to my channel. And let's get into it. I'm going to present to you guys the 2020 Chic Hodo individually sold brush sets. They are part of my 2B classification brushes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link that in the I and down below in the D bar. So go check it out. And basically that means that these are individually sold. They are, or could be part of a set as well, but also individually sold. And they are natural bristle brushes or a mixture of natural and synthetic brushes. This time, I'm gonna do things just a little bit differently just so that it can help me out as far as editing wise I'm not gonna put any insert any secondary film into this I'm just gonna go ahead and review each brush and give you my notes on it as we go along that way you guys know all about the brushes how much they cost where they're from um, what they'll be doing Saturday night that kind of thing as we go through this I'm gonna demo them at the same time so you guys see I don't have anything on my face right now my eyelids are prepped and primed I did put some loose some translucent powder but other than that it's just concealer I don't really ever put eyeshadow primer on I'm gonna be using some of these eyeshadows these singles here from Sydney Grace I have a video that's probably going to go up after this but this is um, actually my dupe selection from Sydney Grace for the um, Natasha Denona mini retro palette so if you guys are interested in that I'll link that I will leave the names of the shadows down below in the description bar but just so that we can kind of keep going through this and focus on the brushes I will just be mainly talking about the brushes here today and I won't necessarily be going over the shadows that I'm using so it's not really an eyeshadow tutorial as much as it is a brush review okay the first brush that I'm going into is the chic hodo blending brush so I do want to start off by saying that the um, brushes don't have any numbers and they barely have any names also I do want to add that there's quite a few brushes with the same description so it's going to be really difficult but I'll link all the brushes down below and then in order of how I use them so hopefully that keeps you guys um, kind of knowing what's what but I will go into it later that they are there's a reason that they should label these brushes <laughs> let's put it that way so we're gonna start out with the blending brush it looks just like this and I'm going to be blending in my transition shade as I talk to you guys about this brush so I bought this brush for seven dollars forty seven cents I had some Aliexpress coupons that I used and cashed in and right now currently the brush is for sale for nine dollars and forty five cents so prices have went up a little bit um, I was very fortunate enough to um, be a part of the Fude Brushes group and in there we have one of our lovely bloggers who put together a um, kind of a Chinese notes guide on how to read Chinese in relation to brushes so I will link that down below but she is has a blog and it's called a millennials notebook and I will link that page down below so you guys can see but I did have to reference that when finding out what types of hairs that I have because I do say that Aliexpress translates their their Chinese but sometimes there are certain words that just don't translate very well so I did have to use the Millennials notebooks um, Chinese and I will link that down below so thank you again Annie for that and for this one here it is gray squirrel and pony hair so it's a mixture of both you kind of get the both uh, the best of both worlds in this it's extremely soft but it is very productive at the same time and it's kind of a nice workhorse um, the this brush right here doesn't really have like um, an extreme amount of density of bristles it's much more on the sparse side so I will say that if you have small hooded eyes this is a great brush for you in that respect but for me I don't necessarily have a lot of prime real estate but I do have prominent eyes so I do find myself um, like you know I would say I have a little bit more than average but probably not like a lot of 
space above my eyelids but if you look at my eyes they are you know really wide and nice and open and doll eye looking so they are very prominent as far as my eye shape goes so this brush here um, gray squirrel pony hair no issues with it I do find it to be a little bit on the precise side when I'm laying down a color you'll see I kind of like to just give it a wash all the way through and you can see right here this really does stay pretty close to in the crease the next brush that I have is also squirrel and pony hair and it's more of that hand paddle shaped brush and it's densely packed I would say it's fairly densely packed and I truly appreciate it all right this brush I bought it for seven dollars and 26 cents and you got to remember guys I did purchase these um, I think it was before the pandemic even occurred so I've had them for quite a while well I haven't had them for quite a while but I've had them ordered quite a while ago. The brush is now $9.19, so this went on really dark. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just see if I can do a little bit of blending. If I turn this to the side, and just see if I can do a little bit of blending here. Uh, kind of, not really. Let me back out and use this brush. Well, what you do to one side, you gotta do to the other, so. I really wasn't gonna go uh, this big. However, <laughs> looks to be like I am. So just from the start of this, I know you guys probably, um, I don't know if this will get, parts of these will get edited out, but if you notice, my hand is all the way back as far as it can possibly be on the brush, okay? And I've got it kind of wedged in there since it does have like this beveled edge. And I do have it like, you know, all the way in there, right? And I still have a lot of precision. I still have a lot of control. And yet farther when I'm blending, but there is not enough. Um, they do give you the measurements on the website. I don't know why I thought that it wasn't gonna be short. It looks short as a matter of fact, but that I do kind of have an issue with. So moving on, we have an eyeshadow brush here. This is labeled as mink online, but it is actually um, Kolinsky or a Siberian weasel hair brush. I'm just gonna show you guys real quickly. This does pick up fairly decently without any, you know, help. Here we go, come on, focus. It just really picks up a light wash of the color, however. So just to let you guys know that, but there is some on there. This is a beautiful duochrome. I don't know if you guys can see that shift or not, but I tried to lay it over a green so the green would come out. I no problems with this this is pretty precise so I don't have any problems as far as the ang or you know as far as precision goes or the handle being too short on this particular brush okay let's move forward to a goat hair brush I picked up this goat hair brush this is the only one that I believe that they have it is a paddle shaped one kind of resembling the Mac 217 if you will it retails currently for $9.99 which is a little high for AliExpress in my opinion but I got it for $7.89 and um, I'll just go ahead and pick up a little bit of shadow and place it underneath my eyelid and talk to you about it. I did find out that this is not Sai Bai Coho hair, but it is in fact Sai Coho hair. It's really soft, I don't have any issues and I can slide this underneath my eyes with no problems. However, it's Chinese artisan, I, I, I really stress this, Chinese artisans don't have the same standard of quality as Japanese food egg brushes. These are Chinese artisan brushes that we're talking about. We're not necessarily talking about Japanese artisan brushes. So keep that in mind when you, um, when you watch this review. Water it underneath my eyes here and just brought a little cloudiness to the mix. There we go. And then I'm also just gonna bring it up in here and just kind of feather out this part up and around. It's really, really soft hair, but as far as um, 
you know, I would have really appreciated seeing Sai Bai Koho because that kind of translates to Sai Koho. So I do think it's still Sai Koho. I wouldn't put it as anything less than that, but just keep that in mind that it is, you know, um, it may not be the same quality as your Japanese food aid brushes. I will say in terms of quality between Refer and this one, you know, I think the hair is spot on. Um, this is the Refer 01 brush here, and then I have the Shikodo brush um, right here, and it is, I mean, very, very comparable as far as density and softness of the bristles, so I re and also consistency throughout the pile of hair. And uh, these brushes are handcrafted. I'm not talking about, you know, Chinese manufactured brushes. I'm talking about Chinese artisan brushes here. So just keep that in mind also. The next brush that I, the next brush that I'm going to feature here and review is the, it's an eyeshadow shader brush. I was kind of hoping that it would look a little more MAC 242-ish because it does boast a weasel hair. I purchased this for $9.11 and it's currently on sale for $11.99. So the prices definitely have gone up, but also to let you guys know that there are coupons that you can get on the website so you can always, you know, save a little money. All right, perfect. That looks really good. This right here is looking a little harsh, so I am going to take some in-between shadow and just kind of blend it over the top feather that in it is the bristles are not extremely extremely soft however I find that it does exactly what I need and it's a very nice precise blending or not blending but shader brush and it goes and it adds color right where you want it and it doesn't really produce a lot of fallout because that weasel cuticle is nice and stiff and rigid and yet um, you know really just packs it on there so I don't know if you can see that very well or not but it really picked up a lot of shadow. I am gonna tap off because I did have fallout on this other side and then just go ahead and add. So you can kind of see there that's really just adds this, you know. And you can see like this right here is pretty small for my lid. So like I could use it as an inner corner highlight and then I could also use it underneath the brow bone as well. So really small and precise. So if you're needing a brush like that, this this is probably a good shape to look for as far as that goes. And then I'm also gonna flip that side around and just at marry the chameleon red with this champagne-y looking color. Just kinda that worked really well for that. But as far as, like I said, you know, I do have enough real estate in this area that I could probably go a little bit bigger, like the MAC 242 size. The next brush that I have, it is a dense round blender. There's no crimped ferrule or anything like that. And um, it is a really nice brush for kind of right up in that crease area right there. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of color right here there we go, and just kind of spike it upwards that's where I find that that's really good it also would be nice blender for in the crease if you had kind of a small you know crease space and you want to keep things nice right nice and tight and just kind of focused right in the crease area you would really probably appreciate a style of brush like this this brush is also um, it is gray rat and pony gray rat excuse me gray squirrel so on the website it says gray rat but when you actually translate it it is um squirrel <laughs> i bought it for seven dollars and seventy cents and it's currently on the website for nine dollars and seventy five cents so just to let you guys know that i'm gonna go ahead and just fluff in there a little bit more but it's a really nice brush that i have found it's pretty soft i wouldn't say it's like that pony hair really does kind of give it a little edginess, if you will. So if you've ever used a squirrel pony hair mix, um, you either love it or you hate it. So it's kind of, there's no in between, I have found. The last brush that I'm gonna talk about <laughs> is um, worth mentioning here, but I was not the only one that had this issue. I ordered a brush, an eyebrow brush, that was supposed to be Palami hair once I translated that 
but I received a synthetic brow brush hair. At the time, I did not know that because I have ordered brushes online for, through AliExpress before, and they do, you know, they do tell you that they could differ within a millimeter's length, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking in terms of a brush, it is actually quite a bit. Like if you have seven millimeter versus eight millimeter, that is quite a bit of a difference. I bought this brush, I got it, I just checked the box and you know sent the payment through and whatnot. And then I went back and looked through the website and found that there's actually two different eyebrow brushes, that there's a synthetic hair one, and then there's the Palami one, which is the one that I ordered. And that really ticks me off, guys, because I don't own anything like it. I own a brush like this. I own a brush, like maybe three of these types of brushes. They're synthetic hair, and they're used for your eyebrows. And um, I thought maybe we go ahead and do a little bit. I have nothing, nothing. The, it's really thick, so I don't know. I just don't know, guys. Like, I'm not, 100% satisfied with it. Um, I get really out of control really fast with the brow and I really wanted a shorter haired brush that was denser and really really stiff because like this is my natural brow hair and I kind of like mine a little longer so I don't have to fill in as much. I don't know. I can't really fathom the idea of cutting your hair off just so you can fill in your brows. That makes no sense to me so I just trim my hair and then I like to just add a little bit of shadow a little bit of depth so it looks a little denser but I can't really do that with this brush because it's too long and it's too fat so I don't have good control and good precision um, however I will try to do that for you guys today so this is me I mean you see that like that that's a little too much in my opinion and I just I wish I could have gotten the first one I'm not the only one that had this problem I think it's because they don't have any numbers on their brushes and they don't have any names to their brushes so it's really kind of difficult for them to keep track of the different brushes and it was probably an honest mistake like I'm not mad about it but I wish I would have paid closer attention because now if I want that brush I'm gonna pay full price for it and um, they sent me a cheaper brush so really <laughs> you know what I mean get with it Ali Ali to the Express okay so I'm just gonna kind of like go up here and you can see like I just don't really have any control it seems like just add a little bit of shape here maybe terrible but I really wanted the other one to see if that's what I liked. Originally, I was looking at the Hakuhodo S164 or 165. I don't know what it is number-wise. It, it was a while back. I should probably have it in my book here in my notes. But I have it, and it's $45, so I was going to purchase this AliExpress brush to see whether or not I liked it and then the AliExpress brush would go in my kit and then I would keep the Hakuhodo brush for myself right because you don't want to wash animal hair brushes like constantly um, <laughs> I don't know how to put this lightly but basically I don't want to spend $45 on a brush that's synthetic hair which is what the Hakuhodo brush is I went back and looked so I'm not even gonna buy it anyways um, but I do know that I wanted that other brush I still want it because I really do need it I don't have anything like it I don't own anything like it and um, yeah it just it kind of irritates me you can see like I can't really get in there and fill in that sparse area because this is too flimsy and like I can't kind of like rake through it so I guess like maybe just if I took like and just kind of I guess would that work I don't know I don't know I don't know guys like let's go over all right I gave you guys a little demo of the brushes now let's go over the three um, three criteria that I'm going to use to classify all my recommendations and that is uh, quality with respect to price classification and then performance so let's start with classification these are 2B brushes um, if you don't know what I'm talking about I'll link that in the eye and down below in my makeup classification video 
I explain how there are different types of brushes and they go in different categories and you really can't look at one category versus another category and compare the two because there's oftentimes factors that just don't um, make it possible for you to compare the two. So for example, I have a 2A and a 2B section where these are brushes that are individually sold as well as could possibly be in a set, but um, 2A is synthetic um, nylon taclon fibers and 2B is natural bristle fibers. And you don't wanna compare those two because um, natural bristle definitely doesn't behave the same way as synthetic and you don't take care of them the same way. So back to my review. Quality with respect to price. This is a, I believe it's a copper ferrule. Maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, the bristle hairs, I don't have any issues with. I fully, they meet my expectations as far as that goes. The quality of like styling, however, of the brush itself doesn't meet my expectations. There is, I have brushes like this. So for example, this refer brush right here, you can see that it's sufficiently taller. Okay, it's got a couple extra centimeters on top of it. Length of the Shikohodo, not to be confused with Chikohodo, uh, the Shikohodo is uh, substantially shorter in terms of handle length. And that really comes out when you start using the brushes. I cannot tell you how it makes me feel to grab a hold of a brush with the center of weight being so far back and just start cranking away on the blending that it's not a very natural feeling. Like, look at this. This is not a natural feeling. This is natural right here. So I've got this and it's just kind of, you know, hanging and, and then I can just kind of do a little blendy poo paw with it but this is just too short. Another um, quality aspect of it is they put the name of their brand all the way down at the bottom. So it's covered up. Now I'm, you know, I'm doing my makeup tutorial. I have forgotten to link down in the description below what brush it is, but you don't know what it is. And maybe I don't even know what it is now because I can't even see the name of the brush. Okay. Not that they even have names of brushes anyways on these, but they just, I mean, they don't even have the brand name available for viewing right here. So that's kind of just like a continuous improvement that really makes things stand out. Like when you think about brushes that really look good quality. I think of the Mac because you can see that logo. I think of Zueva because you can see it written up here as well. It's like, why not do that? You know, this is how people hold their brushes. They don't, you know, they're always covering this part up. And with this being the vast majority of where the weightiness, I mean, it tapers opposite of what we're used to. We're used to it being tapered, you know, inward like that. But, you know, just little things like that, that really the quality the craftsmanship that went into it, like who didn't think about that, right? I mean, I guess if you had really, really tiny hands, but I do have kind of small hands, like my hands are not that big. Um, even though they look really chunky, they're not long. So I can only imagine what somebody with a little bit longer of hands would um, end up doing. So quality with respect to price did not meet my expectations for a brush that is between the seven and nine dollar range and now is between the seven or you know the nine to twelve dollar range i expect a little bit more i do i want to make sure that if i'm recommending this product that i can basically say if you doubled the price of the brush you know would that be like japanese and i couldn't necessarily say that's true because i really feel like they missed a lot when they chose this design this right here is really really lightweight and this is super heavy on this and it's bulky and it's just not not comfortable for me to use um, i've used it on clients without any different feelings they just don't they're not very comfortable to use um, so the last thing is performance wise and i kind of went into that already uh, with quality with respect to price but again performance wise the bristles do meet my expectations so if one of the brushes really strikes your fancy then you won't be disappointed 
or you will be getting your money's worth as far as that goes. Whenever I go back to edit, I always am like, why did my neck look so fat? Anyways, I don't think you would be disappointed if you bought a brush like this. However, do I think that there's better brushes out there? Yes. Um, so Chic Hodo is underneath the brand My Destiny. So My Destiny is the company that manufactures for Chic Hodo. And they do have a brush set that I have reviewed. And this is one of the brushes from that brush set. And I will link that in the I and down below in the D bar. So go check that out. But I really highly recommend this brush set over the these individual brushes that you can buy. And you can see right here if I line these up, this is substantially taller. And even this, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch, so let's say four centimeters, three centimeters, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not really that great with SI units because I, I am located in the United States. But I will say just that amount of length added onto your brush just really helps it. And because the weightiness of the brush is up in this region right here, it really makes it for an easy, easy blend. Um, this part right here, I mean, it's fairly consistent, but it does taper just a little bit right there. But um, I won't go into too much detail with that, but it just, you can see it's a better build. It's a better design. They really missed big time on the design. In conclusion, what I recommend the brushes, there are a couple of brushes that did stand out to me. And the one that particularly stood out to me was the Weasel Hair Brush. I really appreciate this brush. Um, this is gonna make for a great brow bone highlight and inner corner highlight. And because Weasel is, it's a little on the stiffy side, but it's not too bad that I can get in there and I can just kind of, I'd be able to use this on clients really well. And because it's a precise brush, I can almost hold it like pencil uh, length apart and you know, that's acceptable. So th at that point, this part doesn't bother me, but that's really the only brush that stood out. Do the bristles perform? Absolutely. But I do a lot of makeup on the side, so I make it work. I mean, I can make it work with Sigma brushes, and I don't necessarily recommend a Sigma brush, but I can make it work. You know, I can make it happen. With that being said, is this an overall recommend? Probably not. I would say, um, you know, there's other brushes out there that I would recommend, and I've read other bloggers' articles, and they have a lot of the other mainstream Chinese artisan brushes that really seem to, you know, they hit the nail on the head and this one just did not do that for me. So unfortunately, I can't necessarily recommend the brushes. All right, guys, that is it. If you guys really appreciate these types of things, you can always hit that thumbs up on your way out. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you like these types of videos. Can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.